Hey, folks, welcome to Weekend Technical Analysis Update by InTheMoneyStocks.com, your leaders in pure technical analysis, avoiding all that Wall Street hype. This Weekend Technical Analysis Update is for Monday, May 14th through Friday, May 8th, 2012, and is sponsored by Realtek. All right, let's get right into it, folks. We have an ultimate market setting up for a sizable move this week. And again, the question is, where will it go? Last week, this is a chart of the intraday SPY, which mirrors the S&P 500. You can see last week was a down week, but in all fairness, almost all the dips were bought back up. And again, you can clearly see that. I mean, looking back to last Monday, you dipped early and were bought back up. Tuesday, you had a gap down, sold sharply, and then rallied back up. Wednesday, same thing, and then rallied up. Thursday, we kind of just went sideways. And again on Friday, off of that J.P. Morgan $2 billion loss, the markets rallied up, but then could not hold their gains and sold back down. But either way, again, considering the amount of bad news that was out last week, the markets didn't take a humongous hit. I mean, we were coming off elections in Greece and France, and you know we were coming off bad news in relation to the economy in Europe as well as in the United States. I mean, some, some decently poor numbers out there, and even the J.P. Morgan news, I mean, you didn't exactly collapse drastically. I mean, the spiders, for instance, were only down 41 cents on Friday. And again, yes, we ended towards the lows of the day on Friday, but that's in an anticipation of what could come in the next week. And you have a lot of people, and this happens almost every Friday, we see like a late-day sell-off because people just don't want to hold over a weekend when Europe will open Sunday night into Monday, and then the U U.S. markets are subject to that risk. And even late in the day, you see like one bar sell-offs towards the end of the day here. And again, that's because no one wants to hold overnight going into the European markets the next day. In any case, bottom line, folks, the markets again continue to be in a precarious position. But I have to note the fact that they have not been getting crushed. And we are coming into a week of options expiration. And that makes me, believe it or not, it puts me more in a neutral position. Because again, I look at last week and I say to myself, as chief market strategist here at InTheMoneyStocks.com, I say to myself, all right, listen, there was a ton of bad news over the last you know, week. And the markets, again, did not get absolutely demolished. And knowing that, we're coming into options next week with a lot of bears out there. And also, we continue to get negative news out of, you know, Greece over the weekend in relation to them trying to form a government there as well, which is just not happening. And the JP Morgan news and so forth. And the markets, again, to me, are setting up for a possible neutral to positive week. I know it sounds crazy, and I know there's a lot of people out there disagreeing. But that's how I've made my fortune, folks, by going the opposite way. And ultimately, I will be honest with you guys, ultimately the markets are going to go lower and they will get absolutely annihilated. But I'm not sure if this is the week to see them. Now, I don't think the markets are going to go up big time anyways. But I just don't necessarily foresee this week as being a huge down week. It could be. But I'm not seeing it that way. And again, we have the Facebook IPO generally expected on Friday, although there's some questions whether or not it could be pushed back a little bit. You have Options X, and then even the following week is a holiday week. We're coming into that uh, Memorial Day holiday weekend in the following week. So it's going to be a very intriguing week, and we're positioning ourselves accordingly here at InTheMoneyStocks.com to make the most of it and make money. And again, I think what we need to watch in this week, if there's one thing you're going to look for this current week, I want you guys to follow the charts and see, do we continue to have these rallies off dips where the market's getting bought up? How is volume, for instance, also? Volume is very, very key. The heavier the volume, the more likely the downside is there. But again, you know, based on what we saw last week, a lot of bad news and not a lot of downside, we could be setting up for a little bit of options X bounce this week. All right, let's go to the daily chart of the SPY, which again, this is what tells you that there's overall bearishness to the market. And I actually, as I said before, folks, whether or not we bounce up a little this week and hold kind of a neutral line this current coming week and maybe even the following week, the market is going to go lower. I want to make that clear, folks. There is going to be more downside. And it, interestingly enough, if we got neutral to a positive move for a week or two here, it would probably set up the bulls to come back on board just before the next flush, which is very appropriate for the kind of counter trend movements that the market usually makes. But again, look at this pattern, shoulder, head, shoulder. And again, this is a clear cut head and shoulder pattern that has triggered. This means this market is going much, much lower. 
In fact, it will go to the 129, 130 level on the spiders to complete this head and shoulders. And this, again, triggered right here. But again, the question is, do we go sideways for a little bit, maybe float up a little bit back towards these lines, maybe the moving averages as they slope down, and then flush? Or do we flush this week in a major sell-off event? And again, based off of last week, and I'm just going off history and what we're seeing in the charts, it's, there's no guarantee that you're going to see the massive flush this week, at least not early in the week yet. Okay, and again, you know, going into a Facebook IPO, I have a hard time believing that you're going to see major selling in the markets or collapse because um, you would think that they would want the market or the powers that be anyways want the market to be held up into that, especially the people that are doing the Facebook IPO, which is, uh, you know, a lot of the big institutions. They don't want the markets crushed, getting crushed into it because there'll be a lot less interest. From what I'm hearing, it's oversubscribed already. I think we should hear tomorrow if it definitely will be on, on Friday that the de debut occurs. Um, if that's the case, again, it just adds more credence to my thought process of not letting this market flush until probably the following week from this week, maybe even the following one after that, after the holiday. All right. Uh, in any case, let's go to the dollar. The dollar was a great call. We've nailed the dollar left and right. You have a class. You had a classic head and shoulders pattern which failed, and you can see the dollar has had a big move. But the dollar, in all fairness, is into resistance here. I mean, there is resistance here on the UUP. Now, I think the dollar, as we speak, is trading up um, over the weekend here, going into the next day. But that's no guarantee of where it will open um, in tomorrow's session. In any case, resistance here on the dollar. This is the UUP chart. If you get through that level, you have a good chance to go all the way up to here. And this is when. When the dollar goes here, this is when that head and shoulders will complete. All right? And by the way, folks, I mean, I just want to make clear here that the charts continue to tell us that there is future downside and major downside in this market. The, the, the charts, however, are not necessarily predicting it precisely as in tomorrow, meaning Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. It may be pushed off just a little bit there before that next flush comes through. All right, let's go over the gold chart. Gold, again, getting hammered last week, absolutely annihilated. And a lot of people, this is counterintuitive to a lot of people, although it makes perfect sense to me. A lot of people say, well, if markets are scary, why don't people buy gold? And the answer is, I mean, it, people, it doesn't work that way necessarily because gold has been an asset that people have accumulated for so long that when people get scared, they just go back to cash. So there's going to be a level of selling in gold, at least until it gets to a more respectable level where institutions start loading up on it again. All right? And in my opinion, I think within the next month or two, you will easily hit this maybe even in the next three to four weeks, this little double bottom here at the 148-ish level on the GLD. And I know a lot of people have been buying gold, and you hear all the commercials on the radio and so forth to buy gold. Nonsense. Nick and I, my partner and I, have been saying stay away from gold for a long time. You'll get a buying level um, later this year that will be awesome. My guess is it could be as low as here, if not even a little bit lower, where you'll get a great buying opportunity. Okay, SLV, again, SLV hit my target level finally, guys. Take a look at the trend line right here. This is a major trend line sloping through, and again, it did kiss this level here finally, and sure enough, bounced off of it. Eventually, it will break through here, but short term, there's actually support here. Okay, short term, there is support on the SLV, which is silver. The USO had a great sell-off last week, folks. Let's zoom in on the charts. We called this sell-off beautifully as well. Um, short term, your general downside has been essentially achieved at this point between these two levels. I do think oil bounces very possibly this week. You will get a bounce, which would obviously, usually when the markets dump, oil goes down. So if you get a bounce in oil, it generally would coincide with a small bounce up in the markets as well. And again, you can see here, this pivot low right here, you came right through. All the amateurs bought at the 200. This is where I was waiting to buy down here. You know, this next support. You always have to learn that in relation to the markets is that when everyone else is looking to buy a level, it usually takes that level out because it wants to take out the weak hands that are jumping the gun on buying. What you want to do is patiently wait below that level and scoop it up, which again was down here, and then you should get your bounce back. And we'll again watch this week to see if we do see that bounce back effect in oil. Taking a look at a couple key stocks, JP Morgan absolutely annihilated here. However, I will say this, JPM did hold above the 200 moving average. There's major support here at the 200, folks. Major, major support. If this level gets taken out, the 200 gets taken out, you will be looking for this level as your next level. I am not opposed to picking up a small amount here at the 200. Um, even though it's a loss in confidence for JP Morgan, $2 billion loss is not exactly earth-shattering. It'll basically make them throw out one quarter in terms of getting a loss for one quarter, and then they'll be back to making billions per quarter. 
and you'll this will be a distant memory within two months, and honestly, it's a fair chance that short term that this does bounce back here. I wouldn't be surprised to see a trade back to 37.5 tomorrow, possibly, meaning Monday or Tuesday. All right, now if it does happen to gap below the 200, then patiently wait for this level, which is at the 34.65, 34.70 area on J.P. Morgan Chase. All right. Also, I think Goldman Sachs is getting very attractive here. Goldman is nearing the $100 even number level. I personally would prefer, though, to see a little bit more downside on Goldman, possibly to this gap fill here. You have gap window right here and gap fill just below, and this would be your general vicinity where you want to start to accumulate, I think, assuming it continues down. Now, I don't know if it will necessarily, but if it does continue down, that's your zone. That is your green zone for buying this chart, in my opinion. It'll be oversold at that point and due for a very solid bounce. You can pick it up as a swing trade. Okay. Other than that, folks, let's take a look at a couple other leaders out there. Apple continues to hold a level, but there's a bear flag here developing, and Apple will be going down more. The question is when. Can it hold the market up for a couple more days, if not another week or so, or is it going to be flushing? And all you need to know and all you need to follow, folks, is this trend line here, which is essentially the gap fill low pivot from before earnings. Here's your jump on earnings on Apple. And then your retrace. This is a beautiful downward move in spirit of bear flag with the 20 crossing over the 50. It's a very bearish chart, extremely bearish chart. And if that chart plays out, believe it or not, you're easily headed to here on the Apple chart, maybe even eventually the 200. I think later this year you'll hit the 200 on this Apple chart very easily. All right, But again, the question is when. It's all a question of when. I hope everyone's seeing that here. All right, The charts are absolutely bearish, and everyone should be generally bearish out there based on what the charts are. And listen, I'm no bull. I'm no bear. I just follow the charts. If the charts are telling me go long, I go long. If they're telling me to go short, I go short. And again, the longer term next two to three week chart pattern is absolutely bearish. And I'll be looking to short. Question is, can we get a little bit of a bounce early in the week and possibly make some money that way and then look for the flush? I have a few longs out there in, in trades that I like longs, and I have a few shorts out there in trades that are very bearish. And you can get those by taking the seven-day free trial to the research center. I repeat, seven-day free trial, swing trade alerts, hot charts and alerts, uh, channeling stuff. I mean, doing so much videos every single night methodology, which, by the way, is secret proprietary methodology we will teach you. Okay? That's the beauty of what we do, folks. You can't find it in a book. We came up with this. It works. It's made me a ton of money. It's made members a ton of money. We have members that literally within six months have turned thirty thousand dollars into one hundred and fifty thousand. Go find somewhere else, even even a hedge fund or institution doing that, especially when JP Morgan's losing two billion. You're not gonna find it. Strictly following the methodology, you will rule this world. If you can follow it. And it's not that hard, frankly. It takes a little bit of discipline and you can do it. All right, bottom line is there's a seven-day free trial here at InTheMoneyStocks.com, folks. I encourage you to come try it out. What's the harm in trying it out? See if you like it. See what you get inside. See the methodology. If you have an open mind to learn and to profit for life, this is the place to be. Our group of traders is literally the best in the world. We will be taking over the world. We will be rocking and rolling. We will be profiting for life. I have members that I've taught how to do this, and they won't literally make money the rest of their lives because of the secret proprietary methodology. In addition, folks, if you're a day trader, if you want to get into day trading, the intraday stock chat's here for you. There's also a seven-day free trial for that, and you can do it with us, with our methodology, which works on everything, by the way. Forex, commodities, stocks, ETFs, anything is tradable based on the methodology. It is universal, all time frames, day trading, swing trading, longer term investing. It is there for you. It's just a ma matter of which time frame you're looking at, and you apply it to that time frame. All right, on that note, folks, I'm going to get to studying the charts, setting up for trades tomorrow. We have a no-hype live Sunday night broadcast, which I'll be doing, which is part of the Research Center. They're live broadcast. You see my charts live. You see everything live. And ultimately, you ask questions. We go over chart setups for the next week, and we rock and roll and make more money. Have a great evening, folks. And again, enjoy the weekend. We'll see you at InTheMoneyStocks.com. Ready to profit. Take care.